Anywho, uh, hello. We are live. Nice. Alright, so this is episode 8 of the Current Crew Music Podcast. Hello, Budward. Um, as, as always, it's your boy, me, as well as Brooke and Steven, who is hey. live from the board game store, uh, about to play Magic, but that's okay. Uh, are you still there, Steven? Hello. Very nice. Uh, your mic actually sounds pretty good for once, so that that's that's good. <laughs> um, good. Yeah, Skull Candy headphones are apparently made for on-the-go podcasting, so it worked out well. Yeah. Uh, so let me get that off screen. So albums that we're talking about uh, in this episode, uh, Budward. In case you're interested, uh, that song I was playing during during the startup that is "Late Goodbye" by Poets of the Fall, and it is featured in uh, Max Payne One. <sighs> Hi. It's me, editing this episode of the podcast. I've made a critical mistake. Late Goodbye by Poets of the Fall is not featured in Max Payne 1, and I don't know why I said that. It is actually featured in Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. I don't know how I made this mistake, um, and I'd like to apologize, you know, for getting that wrong. Um, I, 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 I just, I can't, I can't believe that, that I got, that I got that wrong. I, what, what was I thinking? Right. Um, it, it's in Max Payne 2, not, not Max Payne 1. What, what the fuck? I'm, I'm disappointed in myself, you know, a as a Max Payne fan. And a poet to the fall fan, I, it's just unbelievable. I I'm so sorry, guys. I I just had to step in and correct myself because I I just couldn't believe that I got that wrong. But uh, anyway, uh, back to the podcast again. I'm I'm so sorry that that I got that wrong, which is a very great game that I might stream sometime. I love that series. Buddy's my best friend. Yeah. Ten out of ten, good friend, bud. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I might go through the whole trilogy at some point on stream, but, uh, anyway, um, albums we're talking about this week, uh, Liturgy's The Arkwork, uh, Taylor Swift's latest album, Folklore, as well as, uh, let me pull it up by podcast channel, blah, 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 uh, where is it, where is it, scroll up a bit, uh, last album is Jubilee Road by Tom O'Dell, so, um, I guess we'll just we'll just start with mine first. Uh, Liturgy's the artwork. Uh, where do where do you even begin with this album? So this album is a bit of a mix of rock, math rock with black metal elements, and it is fronted by one Hunter Hunt Hendrix, who recently just came out as trans. So congratulations to her. Um, but anyway, uh, she wrote this like sixteen page manifesto on transcendental black metal which is the genre that I guess liturgy plays. Uh, there's a lot of, like, graphs and flowcharts and stuff, and this whole mythology that she's come up with that's based on, like, just Christian myth mythicism and all kinds of really weird stuff that I don't understand at all. But I think the music is interesting, and yeah. So this album, um, I first caught wind of this band, as with a lot of the music I listened to from... Anthony Fantano, a uh, music critic who has the channel The Needle Drop on YouTube. Uh, he did a review of this album when it dropped in 2015, and so I decided to check it out. Um, this is really strange, especially for black metal, and I know that a lot of purists kind of just dismiss this as hipster bullshit, um, but I thought it was I thought it was interesting. Um, so, yeah, it's got bells it's got fanfare a lot of midi stuff uh i really like the guitar work on this thing um the vocals are kind of repetitive and they're kind of lost in the mix i don't think the mix is very good but the instrumentation i like a lot uh, but the vocals it's just kind of a lot of eh, eh, get used to that inflection a lot because it's the whole thing uh but i don't really like I said, care for the vocals on this. I mostly really just like the instrumentals on this. Um, 
some of my favorite tracks, uh, Quetzalcoatl, Father of Horizon, uh, Kel Valhall, and Vitriol, and I really like the transition from the song Helligan into Rain Array. I think that's really a really beautiful uh, Helligan, and then, like I said, the kind of transition into the next song on the album. But, uh, yeah, I think I think it's very neat. It's got a lot of glitchy stuff in here, too, that I appreciate. And, yeah, that, that's what I think about it. It's neat. So, um, I usually like Mike's picks. I'm going to preface what I'm about to say with that. But, uh, this is fucking weird. And that's putting it delicately. Uh, I don't hate it, but I definitely did not like it. Um, it's weird, it's strange, it's midi, it's synth, it's black metal, death metal? I I don't know what you can qualify this as. Um, it's just fucking weird. And definitely not my taste. The closest thing that I even got to liking on this al- album was Kel Valhalla, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, the rest of it, not not my taste in the slightest. It's fucking weird. But if you like weird shit and off-the-wall black metal or death metal, whatever genre this is, uh, transcendental black metal, I think is what you called it. Yeah. Uh, did, go for it. I mean, it's it's an interesting listen, if nothing else. All right. Fair enough. Brooke, what Hello. do you think? So, I'm worried for you, because every time I listen to what you pull out, I feel like uh, you just are getting more lost in the sauce that is music. <laughs> because, listen, li- listen, 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 listen. All That's right, like, like, here's the thing. This was garbage to me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like it. I respect where it comes from. I respect the genre of music. I respect this woman for trying new things with music. But Jesus Christ. This was like... It made... like I don't have ADHD... But it made me have ADHD. Like, I developed ADHD from listening to this. I, like, it it starts with this weird fanfare. What the fuck is that about? What the fuck is that? All right. Like, first of all, if I wanted to listen to fanfare, I'd just go to the PSO and listen to some bullshit for that. Second off, I just can't listen to anything without lyrics or voice. I need vocals. I need it to stay interested. I can't do it. I get so bored. I'm not saying this is bad. But it's bad. (laughs) And, you know, if you're into the weird and sketchy shit of music that Mike's into, where, you know, he's getting into the, like, who even knows what the fuck he's into anymore? Like, Tibetan throat singing? Who even, who even fucking knows what he's into anymore? Sure. This is for you. If you want to pretend that you're an audiophile, go for it. <laughs> That's what I got to say. Okay. Fair. Um, like I said, this is really polarizing. Like like I said, like even if you like black metal in the slightest, like a lot of purists for that hate this because it sounds nothing like it. Um, like I said, the instrumentals do kind of drag on for a long time before the vocals popped in, and even then, it's lost the in the mix. The vocals weren't even there. <laughs> yeah, like, half of the time, like, I had lyrics up, and, like, I'm trying to follow along, and I can't because it's just so muddied in the instruments. But I like the instruments. Like I said, I love the guitar work on this thing. It's probably my favorite part of the whole album, but, like... It's definitely not for anyone. Like, if you're not already listening to, like, weird stuff like this, you're going to hate this. So, I'm not even mad that you guys don't like this. I respect that. It's... It's weird, man. I listen to a lot of weird shit, too. Like, a lot of weird shit. 
but anyway, I guess I guess we'll move on from there. Um, so anyway, I guess we'll just talk about the Taylor Swift one next, and I'll go first since I don't have much to say about it since I literally listened to it 30 minutes ago. Uh, so I got through maybe five or six tracks on this. Um, mm-hmm. Never been a fan of Taylor Swift at all. Uh, back when she was doing country and then she transitioned into pop, I think. I, didn't, I just Look, I don't want to be mean, but I classified that as normie stuff. And you know me listening to hipster bullshit all the time. Um, mm-hmm. But surprisingly, I did not hate this as much as I thought it would. As much as I thought I was. I liked elements of this. I liked some of the pianos on this. Um, I didn't think... The vocals were bad. I thought it was good, even. Uh, but it's still not really my style. Uh, it just kind of sounds like standard sad music, which, you know, that's fine. Uh, not not harping on that at all. Uh, so TLDR, didn't hate it. Thought it was all right. That's all I got to say. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to talk about this? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I... I'm the same way. I did not like Taylor Swift for the longest time. I think that her music has been, for lack of a better word, shit in the past couple of years. Like, I hated, I hated, hated some of her fucking garbage songs. Like, what was that fucking one where she's like, uh, I could have been, if I was a man, then I'd be the man. That fucking sucked. You know? But recently, I think that her contract ended, so now that she's not having to be everybody's teen idol at the age of 30, she can now do music that she actually likes. I think, so this Folklore album, fun fact, she made this during quarantine for shits and giggles. Like, she got into it and she made it. Like, and I dig that. Like, I fucks with that. You know, like, this is the feeling of quarantine. That's like, weird romance but you're pissed off you know what I mean and so this song this whole album I fucks with it like this is the first Taylor Swift album I've ever liked completely like I could listen to the whole album in its entirety and I never listened to albums in their entirety I think that this like first of all I like her use of just like vocals in the first place I think it sounds really well like great and it fits her vibe and her voice. Like, she's getting back a little bit into her country vibes, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, I like it has a weird bluegrass kind of feel, too, because it brings in the harmonica if you listen to Betty, which is my favorite song on the album, because it's, it's Taylor Swift singing about a girl from the point of view of a boy. And I fucks with that, like, gay gender thing. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is, like, Taylor Swift's also, like, coming out party album, and I fucks with it. Like, I think she's coming out of bi. And, you know, I fucks with that. <laughs> I love my uh, use of vocabulary today, but to be fair, my brain's, like, ten miles away. But, yeah, you know, uh, I like Exile a lot. That's the second favorite on here. But, yeah, you know, um, Steven, if you want to get into it, you can. Um. So... A couple of things. I'm going to preface this with saying I am biased as fuck about this because she is a shitty, scummy fucking person and I hate her. But I'll explain that in a minute. Yeah, pl- please the do. From the music, um, this album is it's different from her normal stuff and I can appreciate that. I love when an artist breaks away and does something new, and that's part of the reason I love Ghost so much. Every album with them is basically new and somewhat of a concept album, and it's an interesting vibe, and I love it. I like stuff like that. This is neat. The only sing or song that I can definitely say that I kind of liked was either Seven or maybe Mirror Ball. I hated Mirror Ball, but Seven's good. Not not my style at all. Uh, this is more Kaylee's style than it is mine. And eh, um, I'm I'm iffy on the album. It's it's okay, and it's definitely leagues better than her other stuff, but still not my vibe. Um, the reason I hate Taylor Swift as a person, though, 
Uh, does anyone in the group chat remember when she dated Tobuscus? No. I wasn't even aware that was a thing. Did you ever wonder what happened to Dobuscus? Oh, was that that controversy from like a year or so ago? I didn't even realize the two of them what were happened? dating, and that's like... What did he do? That's like... She what? lied. It came out that she lied about it. There is proof that she lied about it because all of his alibis lined up. Uh, she lied and claimed that he assaulted her and basically mm. ended his career. Hmm. I don't even know who Tobuscus is. I mean, listen, really like I... YouTuber. Like, first-gen YouTuber. I mean, listen, hey, I don't really know any of the concepts. I don't know any of the politics behind her as a singer. I just like this album. <laughs> That's why I said separating the singer from the art. I like this. Yeah. But her as a person, fuck that bitch. Yeah. She's also incredibly scummy. And treats yeah, her I mean, listen, I don't like her as a person. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just dig this album. Like, I fucks with it. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's pretty I'm good. Take advantage of me while I'm Not singing. disagreeing with you. Both just out. saying, yeah. like, I promise this is the... separating art from album, like, or art from artist? Who, buddy. <laughs> she is... She's garbage. Um, That's why... Toby actually had to get, like, his own job and stuff again because yeah. YouTube took away all of his revenue money over the scandal. Mm. Which um, came out later to be completely falsified. I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I looked this up, and the only thing I could find was an April Fool's video that Tobuscus posted, so I think you might be confusing this with a different Taylor. Perhaps... <laughs> But Can I'm, we go I'm into the next song? <laughs> Can we go into the next album? I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have something to do in a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I, I'm just, I, I think yeah. you might be confusing it with somebody else. I, I just hate to cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, but anyway, uh, last album is Stephen's pick. Uh, if I can scroll up a bit. Tom O'Dell's Jubilee. Uh, I spent the least amount of time with this because I literally listened to it like 10 minutes before we started. Um... I've been busy with work. I I literally listened to everything today, uh, last minute. But I skimmed this, and I wasn't expecting this from you, of all people. Like, it's not power metal. It's, like, weird piano music that reminds me of Elton John, sort of? I was gonna say Elton John, too. <laughs> like, what is going on here? I'm just baffled that you picked this honestly and i am confusion i am yes i am confusion please explain <laughs> that's all i gotta say so, so i warned you guys if you look up in the chat uh my pick was a little different for this week um this is an artist that kaylee actually actually introduced actually. me to actually um actually. He is a either British or Scottish. I, I'm pretty sure he's British. He's British. Uh, you can tell on this inflection uh, of his voice. Yeah. So he's from Great Britain, um, and he writes piano music for other artists. But he recently started doing his own studio albums. I say recently, but it's like 2009. I think he started doing this. But um, he's been in this industry for quite some time. Uh, and he takes a lot of inspiration from Elton John and David Bowie, like oh, artists like that. And you can definitely hear it in his vocal inflections, how he plays the piano. Um, a lot of his stuff is actually wildly different. Like uh, he has a song called Silhouette that's not on this album, but that one's more like synth orchestra stuff and sounds a lot like Aladdin Sane. Uh, if you're familiar with David Bowie, it's one of his personalities that tends to be yeah, yeah. more sincere and poppier. Haven't gotten around to uh, that one yet, but working on it. Uh, that's actually one of Kaylee's favorites. Her other favorite is Ziggy Stardust, which okay. is the uh, personality that our car is named after. Nice. Uh, I think the last Bowie album I listened to was uh, Station to Station, and I like that one. So I'm, I'm working through his stuff slowly. 
Uh, I listened to Black Oh, he died. Uh-oh. <laughs> Steven, you've died. Why is Steven dead? <laughs> Steven. Steven. The Steven is dead. Why is Steven, Steven. dead? <laughs> Who killed Steven? Who killed Hannibal? <laughs> oh, he, I he, live. He lives. Oh, Continue. Yeah, someone call me mid podcast. Oh, tell them to quit it. <laughs> I I messaged Dixie and told her to stop. But uh, <laughs> so the last Bowie album I listened to all the way through is probably Diamond Dolls. Uh, I like Black Star and Lazarus a lot. Both are really good. Yeah. Uh oh, he's dying again. Well, can I can I just start talking about my opinion of it's, it and then I'll uh, leave? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Oh, he's bad. It's good. Okay, okay, Stephen. I don't think this one was bad this time. It wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, all I really have to say about it was that this is just watered down Elton John. You can't fool me. The entire time I listened to Jubilee Road, or was it? somebody something i don't remember it 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 just uh, literally in my head i was just like hold me closer time to dance like that was yeah like like you just listen to this and be like man i could be listening to elton john right now (laughs) you can't fucking fool me (laughs) but that's all i have to say um and i'm gonna go now okay actually before you go uh important thing for next week i think we're picking normie albums next week so that you can yell about how much you hate green day so just letting you know (laughs) yay all right bye podcast bye 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 -bye. oh boy uh the screen glitched for a minute but uh anyway we can we can keep going um did you have more to say about that before like you cut out a few times uh, yes, actually, I did. Uh, I found out I really like this artist and really like artists like this guy. Because you know me, I tend to either listen to way hardcore power metal or, like, aggressive metals that, like, clash and grind and are just typically brutal. Or I listen to classical music. There is no in-between for me 90% of the time. <laughs> but, like, this I was listening to and I'm like, Huh. This is actually kind of nice. I dig this. And I had Kaylee send me a bunch of his discography. I'll post some more stuff that you'll probably like, Mike. Okay. Um, But this is a really solid album, and I really, really like it. Alright, nice. So, uh, looks like we went on for 30 minutes this time. Uh, we can pat out the time if we want to. Um, I kind of do want to talk about some other stuff, actually. Um, so an album that I've been checking out, that I, an artist that I've been getting into uh, lately, uh, through listening to 100 Gex, actually, um, there's an artist, Dorian Electra. Uh, they, they, they're like gender fluid, so they use they, them pronouns, so I will as well. Uh, they have an album out called uh, Flamboyant that I've been listening to uh, off and on that I like a lot. It's kind of like weird pop music, I guess. So, like, if you listen to 100 Gex, it's kind of similar to that. They they collaborate with each other, and um, Dorian's on the remix album that um, 100 Gex just put out recently. Uh, but there's a song that Dorian put out pretty recently called uh, Give Great Thanks that is... It's really strange. I'll just put it at that. Watch the music video, pay attention to the lyrics, and you will feel uncomfortable. But despite that, I like the song a lot, and I've been listening to it nonstop. So, yeah. Um, ch- check it out, I guess. Um, as far as other stuff, uh, I don't know. if you've got If you've got the time, we can go through a flow chart or something. I, I don't know what you want to do. We don't have to. Uh, you got anything? Uh, I mean, not really. Also, I do want to say something. Apparently, I was incorrect earlier, and you were right. It was a different girl named Taylor that basically tried to accuse him of sexual assault, and it came out as okay. uh, big lie. Yeah, a yeah. Because I, I remember all that, and I'm like, hold on a second. Let me, let me double check this. <laughs> yeah, you are right. But... Sh- 
my point still stands. Taylor Swift is a scummy fucking person and abuses all of her entourage regularly. Okay, I I don't know anything about this, so I'll just you know take take your word for it. Uh, cause I I don't worry about that kind of stuff. Um, fair. But anywho, um, I guess I kind of actually want to expound on like black metal stuff since I was since the liturgy album is trying to be like an offshoot of black metal of sorts. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a quick black metal story time. So, uh, back in the day, uh, there was a band called Mayhem, and in that band, uh, Mayhem is actually, I'm, I'm gonna probably butcher some stuff here and not get, like, dates right, but I'm just gonna give you the gist, right? So, there's a band Mayhem, you know, traditional black metal band, they're kind of, like, one of the big founders of, I, I don't, like, the new wave of black metal, I guess, uh, I, I figured I'd tell this story because we're kind of talking about black metal, and it's a fun story to tell people. So, in this band, uh, some members, uh, Euronymous, Dead, and one Count Grishnok, better known as Varg Vikernis. Uh, so this dude, Dead, uh, used to, like, cover himself in dirt and stuff and, like, try to portray himself as a corpse. Um, and he ended up killing himself via shotgun blast to the face. And so, oh, oh. Euronymous... So himself. Yeah, uh, so Euronymous took photos of this, and said photos were used as an unofficial official bootleg live album uh, called uh, Dawn of the Black Hearts, which I'm not going to show you on stream, but feel free to look that up. It's literally this dude's shotgun blasted face, his corpse laying on the floor as the album cover. Um, so yeah, I'm Dead gonna King... <laughs> this up, but what was the name of it? Uh, Dawn of the Black Hearts, I believe, by Mayhem. Uh, so Dead kills himself, right? Uh, so this dude, Euronymous, and Varg Vikernis get into... I don't remember what happened here, but basically, Varg goes to Euronymous' house and stabs him a bunch of times. And I don't... I guess before this, Varg set fire to a bunch of churches in Norway. Anyway, he goes to jail. Uh, for murder... Oh, oh <laughs> Hold on one second. Oh. You... Wow. So anyway, uh, Varg goes to jail for murder and, you know, burning down churches and stuff. Uh, spends some time in jail and invents a genre of music called Dungeon Synth, uh, which is basically like instrumental medieval music that you can probably play at your next D&D campaign. Uh, Varg also had this project called Burzum. Uh, and nowadays he lives in the French countryside. He's like an Odinist or something and like a European nationalist. He's a piece of shit. But, uh, Burzum's album Philosophim is, uh, pretty good, I think, despite, you know, Varg being a piece of shit. And he made this really weird tabletop RPG that is way too in-depth and you, like, have to roll for literally everything. Like, oh, if, if, like, if, if yeah, like, if you're trying to cross a river or something, you have to take into account what armor you're wearing, what you're carrying, whether or not the wind is blowing, how strong the current is. There's a lot of bullshit. Um, but yeah, that that's the story of mayhem. Uh, very cool. <laughs> Murder and arson. Uh, dude, what the fuck? There's just like half half of his brain is out of his head. Yeah. <laughs> they just it's just dead. Like guys, okay you. It, look this up it's wow i didn't know your brain could do that it like ejected itself it's like a soup that's so weird it... this band's like real right yeah mayhem is real uh i haven't really the only album of theirs i've listened to is called um Mysterious Day Satanas. Uh, there's an album on. There's a song on that album called. Uh, let me look it up. Give me a second. That I like. Uh, it's called Freezing Moon. That song's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, totally real band. That actually happened. Uh, there's a documentary about it. Uh, there's like a shitty movie about it. Fucking dark, dude. I was joking when I said he Kurt cobain himself, but he literally did. I think Euronymous had a record store in, Nor in Norway, and they had, like, a basement where they did, like, satanic rituals or something, and now it's a tourist hotspot because black metal, uh, yeah. 
the fuck is man? Black metal is weird. You got on the far end of the spectrum, like shit like Mayhem, and then the tamer stuff like Black Sabbath. <laughs> like, what even is black metal? What defines it as a genre? Genuinely, uh, blast beats. It, it's just like they're just like, hey, do you wear? Corpse uh, paint? basically, yeah, I mean, corpse paint. Have you ever? <laughs> Corpse paint. Like, sacrificed a child <laughs> to Satan. Uh, yeah, like once when I was twelve. Oh shit, dude, you're in. You know how to like make two beats and then repeat them? <laughs> yeah. Good. You're in. Yeah. Cor Black metal is literally corpse paint, blast beats, the same guitar riff for the entire song, and <laughs> the whole song. Uh, actually, on that one Burzum album, uh, Var Vikernis recorded all his vocals on the shittiest headset microphone he could find, and aesthetic. I hate it. Thanks. <laughs> the black metal is like there's good shit in it. Like the genre itself has some good bands. Like oh yeah, black for sure. Sabbath. Well, Black Sabbath is more uh, doom metal, but it it shares some some elements, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's genre not or generalized as black metal. Like the whole hey. band. Eh, sorta. Of. But like, then you've got shit like this, and it's like, hold on, I know I'm missing some bands. I'm just gonna Google black metal and see if any of the names stick out to me. <sighs> Fuck, there, there's. I have a flow chart so on this. We were... I have a chart on this. Give we... me a second. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the literal first definition for black metal. Is an extreme subgenre of heavy metal music. Common traits include f fast tempos, a shrieking vocal style, heavily distorted guitars played with tremolo picking. No, 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 no! Stop that! I'm trying not to get DMC. Huh? Uh, I have a uh, map of metal pulled up, and I'm trying not to get DMC would because it auto plays. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, so like. Lo-fi recording, unconventional sh song structures, and artists often appear in corpse paint. Yeah. So, uh, according to Map of Metal, okay, uh, it's the other one I was trying to fucking remember. Demo, Demo Borgir and Gorgoth. Yeah, Demo Borgir is earlier stuff for sure, but their newer stuff turned it symphonic, and they stopped doing black metal. Oh, Bathory. Bathory yeah. is too. Uh, so first wave was like Venom. Uh, Venom arguably started it with their song Black Metal, and then you know Bathory and Sodom and all that stuff. And then second wave was Mayhem and Burzum and all that stuff. And uh, Dark Throne. Oh, Black Dahlia Murder. Uh, fun fact: Finris from Dark Throne runs a music podcast thing on SoundCloud where he just plays music he likes and talks about it, and it's pretty chill. Oh wait, here's a good one that I completely forgot existed uh, until like literally though I think, five seconds. I think Dark Throne turned more into like thrash metal after a while. They the black metal thing yeah. for them was a gimmick initially, but heard of Death Spell Omega? I have not. Uh, good French black metal. Solid. Good luck understanding literally anything they say, but other than that, good band. Alright, bet. Um, I'll send you some stuff of theirs later. I think you'd appreciate it. Perhaps. <sighs> uh, but anyway, uh, I got nothing else to talk about, so I'm gonna go, because, uh, yeah. Same. Anywho, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, next week, as I mentioned uh, when Brooke was leaving, uh, next week we're going to talk about normie stuff. And I've got plenty of that, surprisingly, despite all the hipster bullshit I listen to. I do listen to normie things occasionally. So uh, now I'm just going to have trouble picking something. Do I pick Linkin Park? Spoiler do I alert. do I pick He's Disturbed? Do I pick that one Eiffel 65 album that Blue's on and Blue is overrated as a song and literally every other song on Europop is better than Blue? Fight me. Um, uh, he's going to pick My Chemical Romance. I can almost guarantee it. I want to, but that's, like, too obvious, right? It, it... <laughs> to be fair, I just... I just, I was, 
okay, so when I first started listening to My Chemical Romance, I only listened to Black Parade, and only recently did I start listening to their other stuff. Oh, I listened to everything they've ever written like, for the most part. I listened to a couple I songs off of Three both. Cheers for Sweet Revenge, but I didn't really get into it until recently. I was one of those emo purists that's like, oh, what do you mean you haven't listened to the entirety of My Chemical Romance's discography? <laughs> do, do you even own a Blood on the Dance Floor CD? You're <laughs> don't, not. Don't even, don't even talk to me about Blood on the Dance Floor. Get out of here. <laughs> That shit was oh. that shit was cringe then, and it's cringe now. <laughs> you know what? Fuck Green Day. I know which album I'm recommending. Please. Next week. <laughs> oh wait, I'm I'm con I'm confusing Blood on the Dance Floor for Broken Side, which is even worse. <laughs> I'm going to post it purely. They're they're, to watch they're both bad. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm How? gonna I'm gonna have a full blown stroke. <laughs> you mean you don't like songs such as Scream for My Ice Cream or Sexting? Oh, I hate that. I, I hate it on the album title alone. You're really gonna force me to listen to this, huh? Alright, so be it. <laughs> you have elected the way of pain. <laughs> I live to suffer. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna go and make dinner and uh, think about playing game or something. I'll I'll talk to you later. I'll catch you guys later. Yep. See ya.